Okay, we have come to chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Hebrews 2, that is, 7 and 8 tonight. And carrying on through this chapter, as we are seeing the transition from what we looked at last week with um, the passage quoted from Hebrew, from Psalm 8, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that you visit him. So we'll look at 7 and 8 tonight, and we'll see what the Lord has for us. Let's have prayer, and we will get started. Okay. Gracious Father, we do thank you for being so merciful to us, bringing us through another week and the rain that we had today. We're grateful. And more rain coming. We need the rain of your spirit to revive us again. We pray for Deanne, unable to be with us. Minister unto her as she gets the needed rest. Teach us now as we look at these great verses in chapter 2 of Hebrews. Thank you for your forgiveness and cleansing blood. And bless us with your presence in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Amen. A couple things before we get into the meat. Uh, <clears throat> last week, I had mentioned, and this was more for Deanne. So I may have to, but for the video, she'll have it. We were looking at this passage in in Exodus 34, 7, where she brought up that the phrase that Moses said that God will in no way clear the guilty. And I had a reference from volume six of the testimony, and I didn't have a page number. I looked it up, it's page 282, paragraph 1, talking about the inherited evil traits of character. So you can make a note on that, ladies. Testimonies what again? Page Testimonies, volume 6, page six. 282, paragraph Thank 1. You. Okay. So I wanted to make mention that. The other thing, I decided to pick up this book that I mentioned when we first started Hebrews to see if this guy had anything in it, this Eckhart Mueller. Uh, come boldly to the throne. And he does have some information in here. I wanted to read just a bit what he was, a um, couple things that, he, he, if, if you have the book, I can reference page numbers. But one thing, I knew it, but I, I don't think I had stated it when we moved from chapter one to chapter two. The, the, the first chapter is dealing with the Son of God's unparalleled exaltation. He brings that up at the bottom, page 29. And Hebrews 2 points to the Son of Man's exceptional humiliation. And uh, it, it was just an interesting juxtaposition from how God the Father is honoring Christ in chapter 1 to now honoring him in chapter 2, as we've been seeing the last two, three verses. And it's an exceptional humiliation, as we're going to see as we go through the chapter. I wanted to make that, point that out. Mm -hmm. And also on page 31, the verse we looked at last week, verse 6, talks about man and the son of man. These terms are used in a synonymous parallelism that's at the, he shows a picture of that at the bottom of the page in a box, which is kind of interesting. But uh, there, 
there were some points I did pick up, and I will be reading just a small segment from um, when we probably get more into verse 7, the latter part, and, and into 8. But I, I did want to bring that out presently. Okay. So, looking, we did touch on seven last week. Remember, six was talking about what is man, one in a certain place testified, what is man, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man thou visitest him. Um, this was, as we looked at Psalm 8, this was fulfilled. It was intended to be fulfilled in Adam. But Adam, the first Adam failed, and so the second Adam must come to make it a reality. Okay, who would like to read verse 7? Do you have that there, Yvette? Yeah. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Okay. Did did anybody what did uh, did anybody find anything interesting in this verse in their study? The only thing I was looking at Genesis when God created them. Uh -huh. Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26. Okay. And, um, you know, it says that God gave him dominion over the, you know, the fish, the birds, mm -hmm. the animals. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so it was like this, verse 26. Uh, God said, let us make men in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the uh, fowl of the air, yeah, and uh, over the cattle and over all the earth. And uh, every, every uh, creeping things that covers the earth. That's first before, create, before he was created, man. Mm. And when, after he was created, he said, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and all, um, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth over the earth. So that was in the beginning. And after man's sin, he kind of, he didn't lose dominion, but he lost the ability to subdue the things. He lost, you know, everything was not like it was to be. And uh, the psalmist said that he, you know, God did that, but... You know, it it didn't uh, it didn't stay like that. It didn't stay like God intended. Eight, he said. Four, like uh, David was wondering, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and uh, the son of man that thou visited him. You know, and after that, uh, it goes down until verse 8, you know, about the meaning of everything. So, 
when, when Paul is referring to this, he goes right away and said in verse 8 that that was, he said, thou put all things under him, under his feet. For in that he put all in his subjection to him. But right away he said, now we don't see that, that he, he has dominion, our, I mean ourselves. We don't have dominion over anything on this earth. And verse 8 is more explaining, you know, that Jesus right. put, uh, made Lord the angel, the angels and everything he did. He did through, through his suffering and, you know, but uh, it, was, it was the way I understood it. That so question, mm-hmm. question, Elena, on verse 7, mm-hmm. when it says, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, that's clear. We're more mm-hmm. life form than the angels. Mm-hmm. Then it says, and crowned him with glory and honor. He had a little bit of glory and honor in the beginning, before his sin. After that, that light, that glory, it's evaporated. So, you say he had glory and honor in the beginning, before sin. Not, I cannot say he had a shiny light, covering light. To me, okay, that that's glory. a good point. That's a yeah. good point. And honor, because he was loved by God, just being in the presence of God is not that honor. God honored him. Stayed Correct. But that, that's where, where I see. That's, that's so much that, you know. That's a good point. You know, in the, in the commentaries, um, it says that talking about the crowned crowned him. Mm-hmm. Uh, this says it points to the experience of Adam and Eve recorded in Genesis, mm-hmm. where um, God did not create man to be a servant or a slave. He yeah. made him to be king and mm-hmm. bestowed glory and honor upon him. But in verse seven, it says for a little while mm-hmm. and it comments on saying that, um, let's see, the Greek may be understood either way. Both ideas are true. The latter is especially appropriate yeah. when applied to Christ mm-hmm. for only briefly during his uh, incarnation was he made lower. Where did you get yours from, Yvette? Commentary, Bible the commentary. Ad- the Adventist one? Yeah. Yeah. And see what you just said, what uh-huh. you said, and what Evelina said, that's both in the on the other commentaries. Mm-hmm. They say the same thing that 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 little that the little meaning a little lower, like you just said, it just uh-huh. means like for a little while. Right. Yeah. But it yeah. could be rendered not so much the degree, but mm-hmm. just the That's extent. Fine. Yes, the time frame. It was just going to be a little while. That's really how it should have read, like you just yeah. said. Same thing with what Elena said. It talks all about dominion and creation mm-hmm. in that, just like she was saying, and like Yvette just said. So it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I went and looked at Bible Hub, and the same uh, idea came out mm-hmm. with um, the with the Bible hub about a little lower mm-hmm. and um, it's only for a short period a little while of time yeah. correct and really when you when we look at this ladies in the in the understanding of the plan of redemption, the 
what the Bible calls the Council of, of Peace, Zechariah says, between the Father and the Son and the creation of our world, and also the redemptive plan, because he knew Adam would sin, so he had to have that in place. It it mentions this, this concept, even with, I went into the Bible commentary, or Matthew, Matthew Henry's Bible commentary, and he's very detailed, you know, a lot of these Bible commentaries. His is one of the better ones that I looked at. Um, and it, it, it gives this impression that in the fall, like you alluded to, Elena, man loses everything. Mm -hmm. So to restore back to man, mm -hmm. the second Adam had to come along. Yeah, the plan. The plan was started in action, yeah. Correct. And completely, there's a, there's a, it just came into mind right now. Oh, yeah. I'll have to, I, I know where it is, and I, I'll look it up and, and read it to you. But because Adam could, after his sin, Adam could no longer humble himself. No. It's to good. the degree necessary, Christ had to come and go through this humiliation to such a degree in order to in order to satisfy one, the broken law, mm -hmm. but also recover man. Um let me read this section here. In, uh, in Matthew Henry's commentary, he says, In crowning him with glory and honor, the honor of having noble, this is talking about Adam, noble powers and faculties of soul, excellent organs and parts of body, whereby he is allied to both worlds, this world and, of course, the next. But, of course, Adam failed. And so the passage there, as we've seen from last week, five or six and seven and now eight, is applied, as Matthew Henry says, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the whole that is here said can be applied only to him. Mm -hmm. And then he goes through and he says, what are the fruits of this free grace of God with respect to the gift of Christ for us and to us, as related in this scripture testimony? And he lists several points, that God was mindful of Christ. Did not we see that back in 6? What is man that thou art mindful of? God was mindful of Christ for us in the covenant of redemption. 2. God visited Christ on our account. And it was concluded between them that in the fullness of time, Christ should come into the world as the great archetype sacrifice. Three, that God had made him a little lower than the angels in his being made man that he might suffer and humble himself to death. Yes. And there's a, a reference in W.W. W. Prescott years ago. I read that he says, God had to be made capable of receiving the womb. That's why Christ had become also another reason he had to become a man. Because divinity is not capable of being, as, as Scripture says, tempted, mm -hmm. nor of receiving the wound of sin. So in mm -hmm. order for divinity to experience that, he had to become man. Matthew Henry goes on that God crowned the human nature. Listen to this. He crowned the human nature of Christ with glory and honor. Do, do you see what is he, he's saying? And Ellen White supports this. Christ had to go through all the experiences that we do in order to bring the race back up to where it was, and even more so, before Adam fell. He crowned the human nature of Christ with glory and honor in his being perfectly holy and having the spirit without measure and by an 
ineffable union with the divine nature in the second person of the Godhead, dwelling in him bodily, that by his sufferings he might make satisfaction, tasting, and then it gets into verse 9. So we'll stop there. But it, it's just to, to, to see how in this chapter, and I hadn't, until we started going through this in, in recent weeks, looking at chapter 2, how Christ is going through everything just like we did. We did. According to these verses, 7, he was made a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor. Yes. And did set him over the works of his hands. So in my, uh, I was uh, looking for a, a reference that I found in to First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse twenty five, and here it says, "For he must reign till he hath put under yes. him all his enemy under his feet." Correct. So uh, then uh, in twenty seven said uh, 26 said the last enemy he has to defeat is death but verse 27 said for he had put all things under his feet but after I think at the end but when he said all things are put under his feet it uh, under him it by it is manifest that he is accepted, that he that puts everything under his feet, I think he's one to say, he will not be under him. It's God, God the Father, put Correct. everything under his feet. Correct. And then, his, and after goes to this, that all things shall be subdued, under him and everything everything will be subdued just the father is above he cannot be subdued you know kind of uh paul says all this <laughs> and this is very interesting what you and i'm glad you brought this this passage up we did look at this early on in chapter one mm -hmm. but it seems to be even more applicable now mm -hmm. that last verse verse 28 1 yeah. 15, 28, when all things shall be subdued unto him, mm -hmm. then, then shall, shall the, the Son death. also himself be subject unto him. Yes. That so, put all things under him, mm -hmm. under God, that yeah. God may be all in all. So, yeah. So, it's how connected the work of Jesus with the Father and the work. It's wonderfully wonderfully done on our behalf. And That's could, what I found. Could it be that Christ then subjects himself to the Father because now he's he's linked with humanity forever? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because he would have been one with the Father before. Mm -hmm. But now, obviously, he, he lost his omniscience forever. Yeah. Uh, but this is the cost of yes. saving humanity. You know, it's just, it's so good to just read the Word of God and let the, the Word speak for itself. Yeah. In verse 24, it says, Then comes the end when he um, should deliver up the kingdom to God. So Jesus is delivered whatever he conquered on the earth, he will give it to the Father. That's the way I understand. Well, let me let me interject something right there, Elena. Mm -hmm. Revelation eleven, I think it's verse fifteen, says a loud voice at the beginning of the seventh trumpet. And this is the very end, right before sec right before probation closes. It says the kingdoms of this world are become that of our Lord and of his Christ. Mm -hmm. So at the second or right before the second coming, the close of probation, mm -hmm. God's people are instrumental yes. in fulfilling what God has asked them to do. 
Christ stands up, shuts down the sanctuary. The second coming occurs, and he then brings the kingdom back with the saints. He brings it back to the fall. Yeah. And I think that's what Paul's referring to there at the end. Now, there's yeah. we still got to do with the judgment of the lost a thousand years in the future, but oh, yeah, yeah, but for the most part, the, the plan of redemption is he's recovering in stages, just like the sanctuary yeah. message that mm -hmm. he gave Moses in stages, yeah. God is being proven just and true mm -hmm. are his ways yeah it's to me that's that's what i thought that's what i nice yeah very very well said thank you um for bringing those verses up now moving into verse eight thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet we looked at that for mm -hmm. in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. And really, what Paul said there in 1 Corinthians 15 is very fitting to yeah. help understand this. Mm -hmm. Ladies, is, uh, hon, did you have anything else in these? In, in, no. In no. The verse, oh, okay. read? Yeah, on this verse? No. There is one thing I wanted to bring out from Mueller's book on this. Um, two brief notes on Hebrews 2, 5 through 9. There is a difference between Psalm 8. Thou hast made him little less than God. And Hebrews 2, 7 in the New American Bible. You made him for a little while. This has been brought out already lower than the angels. The original Hebrew term can be understood as either God or the angels. Paul compared Jesus with the angels. He wrote that for a while Jesus was lower than the angels, but now he's superior to them. And we're going to see that more and come out more fully in verse 9. But... Yes. What is interesting is, as we all know, and, and we're going to see it in, in, when we get into nine, it's going to involve suffering. And we'll, we'll talk more about that next time. But this putting all things in subjection under his feet. Yes. And then in verse eight, at the end of eight, but now we see not yet all things put under yeah. him. <laughs> now that's kind of clear why, but at that time it was well, but you know, well, true. But is it still true today? Yes, but at that time was even you know the beginning of the, they were they were making a big uh, toll. Uh, a big effort to teach this to the people, they, his people, you know. So, so yeah. again, as you read there in Corinthians, once we get to the end, really it's second coming. Yeah. Because yeah. it's second coming, we have a separation, physical separation occurring mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. Yeah. No more do the redeemed have to mingle with the godless and the wicked. They are now separated forever. And we go home to glory with the Lord. So that's, that's another uh, marker in the plan of redemption. Not yet all things are put under him, but all who are redeemed are in subjection to him at that point. Yes. We'll have to deal with the ungodly at the end of the thousand years, and we know what will happen there. So that's why I was saying it's in stages. 
And this brings out other things that are not part of our study, like Revelation 5. When we get to the Sea of Glass, and as we read some weeks ago in Third Selected Messages about the two columns of angels, that the saints will enter into the city and, and the angels will be singing on both sides. On the Sea of Glass, all the redeemed and all the angelic hosts are going to say, worthy is the Lamb to yeah. receive. And then there's a sevenfold chorus, power, riches, wisdom, strength. That's verse 12, Revelation 5, 12, honor, glory, and blessing. Why are they saying, hasn't the Lamb always been worthy of receiving these things? Yeah, but... But uh, they have to repeat this. All well, the no, time. no. I think there's another deeper reason, Elena. I was studying this earlier this year, and it was an aha moment for me. 411, it says that the four living creatures give glory and honor thanks to the Father. And then we get to 512, it's the Lamb. It's because the devil has so enshrouded for 6,000 years and charge God with all these horrendous crimes that Satan is guilty of, that it's only after the redeemed at the second coming go back to glory, and on the sea of glass they sing the song, worthy is the lamb to receive, because it is justifying God of any wrongdoing, and the lamb. They're worthy of power, riches, wisdom, yes, and the, he, and the rest. Like it says in the first uh, chapter, he did by himself when, uh, you know, Jesus by himself fought here on this earth right. against the power of, of Satan. You so, know, in so doing, they actually, and, you know, we'll all fall down and worship. Mm -hmm. So all the redeemed and all the angels, we will, all of us will be subdued in yeah. worship and praise to him. Yeah. Yes. But it has to be public. It has to be yes. stated publicly, not forced like it will at the end with the wicked, but out of a heart of love and appreciation yeah. of what yeah. God has done for us. Just to think that we have these passages in Scripture that we can go and read and have insight, you know, of course, with the spirit of prophecy to, to really connect the dots, it's, it's just a tremendous blessing. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's much left to say. There were, <clears throat> I can give you ladies... Let me give you a couple more verses before we wrap this thing up. That the common, the Bible hub, actually it was, I found this in um, the Blue Letter Bible app. But they said this, text commentaries. Oh, wait, that's not it. Cross references. No, that's not the text. There were a number of verses. Let me see if it was this one. I think it's this one. Aha. There's a number of other verses, and I think my wife brought out some of these last week. Um, we looked at the one in Psalm 2, or Psalm 8. Psalm 2, 6 was also mentioned as bringing all things under subjection. Um, what was the verse in Daniel last week that you brought out? I have a 714. Was that the verse? 713. 713, okay. Also, John 3.35, 3, 
kind of brings this concept out. Matthew, you said, I'm sorry. After Psalm 8, you said another one. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Okay. Then that's dealing with the judgment. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah. And the dominion. Mm -hmm. All languages and people shall serve him. Matthew 28, 18. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Yeah. John 3, 35. The yeah. Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. These are all great cross-reference verses. John 13, 3, very similar to the, the one I just read. And the one you brought out, Elena, 1 Corinthians 15, 27. Also, Ephesians 1, 21 and 2. It talks about all principality power being put under his feet. And he'd been given the head over all things to the church. And of course, Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11, these great verses that every knee shall bow, things in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So these are just a few other verses you can add, you can put in to your notes. Okay, well, if there's nothing left, next week we will get into verse 9 in some more detail, following through with the same theme, but there's some other deep things in there, too, that we will be looking at. We're only going to do verse 9 next week because there's enough to keep us busy in this one verse. Okay. Okay, well, I'll, unless anybody has any last things they want to say, I'll go ahead and shut the recording down and we'll get into our prayer time. Okay, great study. And, you know, just reading the Word of God makes a big difference. Thank you, ladies, for your input.